enjoyed is again uh, during an address to the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab condemned the rights record of China and said the United Nations must be given urgent and unfettered access to Xinjiang to investigate reports of abuses in the region. What's the ministry's comment on? We've stated repeatedly that the so-called forced labor, forced sterilization in Xinjiang are just rumors, lies, and disinformation fabricated by anti-China forces. They are groundless, like sand castles. They are doomed to bankrupt. Uh, while responding to an earlier question, I already stated that we urge the UK to respect facts, stop making wrong remarks stop meddling in China's domestic affairs. I would like to point out that for some time we've been hearing and seeing on Xinjiang related issues too much lies uh, that aim to smear China. Not long ago, I talked about this uh, Dabut, uh, a Uyghur woman who forced who falsely claimed to BBC that she was sterilized. Today, I would like to talk about another example um, about lies on Xinjiang. This uh, Ziyadun is another Uyghur woman. In early February, um, she received a BBC interview claiming that in Xinjiang's um, education centers, their uh, abuses of women, the sensational news became a hot topic. But as it turns out, these are uh, just the tools, and these people are just actors used by some forces to attack China. This woman claimed in the interview that uh, the police kicked her down on the floor, beat, kicked her in the abdomen, and she almost passed out. But a year earlier, the same woman, while receiving an interview with BuzzFeed, said that she uh, was not beaten or abused. And she said in the BBC News that in Xinjiang, in the education centers, uh, there is systemic sexual abuse against women. Some American media has pointed out that before she arrived in the U.S., she received many interviews with foreign media, during which she never mentioned once such behaviors and never claimed that she was a victim of sexual abuse. But curiously, after only a few months after she arrived in the U.S. and uh, was training um, by certain forces, she changed her line. Shouldn't that provoke some thoughts? The woman also received an interview with CNN. She said that she was uh, an IUD was placed in her in Xinjiang, but actually uh, she couldn't have any babies, and that is known by her family. And so she never uh, went through any uh, any sterilization or similar operation in Xinjiang. So these are just very um, uh, rudimentary tricks and people can see through them very easily. However, um, prominent media like BBC, when they stumble upon such news sources, they feel like they've uh, stumbled upon a treasure and just uh, uh, went ahead to report that. And in doing so, they became a platform for lies and rumors. And uh, BBC attributed uh, the issue to China's restriction on free media, free reporting, that is, um, blaming the innocent party. The facts are plain, and people can all see BBC with its uh, time-honored brand should investigate the truth. It's not as if it couldn't do that, it's just it's is not uh, willing to do so. For some time on issues relating to Xinjiang and China, BBC has been spreading rumors and lies. I only have two hands here, but um, that's not enough uh, to 
can't be business lies and rumors. I hope people with vision and insight can reject the fabrication of lies and rumors to attack other countries. We hope they will see through such tricks and uh, do not act like BBC uh, to work as a platform for others to spread uh, their lies and rumors. Just to follow up on what you've just said, uh, we have seen over the years that China has on many occasions sent teams and task forces to investigate allegations of child labor or food safety or other issues of public concern uh, here in China. Can you tell me what task forces or other serious efforts of inquiry have been launched to investigate the allegations of abuses, systemic abuses in Xinjiang? I haven't heard of um uh, the um, working teams or uh, investigators you mentioned. I can state again that on issues relating to Xinjiang and China's domestic affairs, there's uh, a lot of uh, smearing and attacking against China. More often than not, the truth can be easily sorted out. I hope people with insight, especially friends in the media sector, can um, assume their responsibility and before things are verified, do not um, believe one-sided stories and do not become tools for dissemination of false information. Reuters again. Um, thank you for sharing this information with us. I wanted to ask a follow-up on the Xinjiang information that you um, just shared. You mentioned that a woman in particular had spoken about her experiences outside of China, uh, but had not taken the opportunity to speak about those same experiences when she was inside China. Do you believe that women in Xinjiang are able to speak really about their experiences here without impunity. And if a woman or anyone faced issues in Xinjiang's vocational centers, are there adequate avenues for them to report such issues within China? Women in Xinjiang certainly uh, have nothing to fear if they want to tell their stories and their experience. Uh, if you've attended the four press conferences on Xinjiang um, held jointly with the foreign ministry, you can see that there are former trainees of uh, um, voca vocational centers. There's a point I'm afraid you haven't grasped. Uh, this woman uh, left Xinjiang in 2019 before Going to the U.S., she received many interviews with foreign media, and during these interviews, she never once mentioned that she was the victim of sexual abuse in the vocational centers. This line only emerged after <coughs> several months after she arrived in the U.S. and uh, after uh, going through training. Um, by some forces. So by laying out these facts, I hope you can see clearly uh, how these narrative, narratives came out and what is behind them and what is their true purpose. Kyoto News, also on Xinjiang, um, the Bloomberg question, a follow-up. If I understand you correctly, not, not about Bloomberg, but about your refutation. On the sexual abuse, usually victims are reluctant to share their experience with others. It often takes a long time because they have all kinds of concerns. So when you refute it, that, did you realize this factor? I believe after my uh, sharing of uh, information, you can see that the woman told lies inconsistent on many accounts. So it's not just one thing. She lied about many things. So when such a person alleges 
that there is um, sexual abuse against women in China's re um, vocational education centers. Um, can you trust her easily? Why did BBC uh, air the, the interview without verifying um, that it is true? Shouldn't that provoke some thoughts on uh, issues relating to Xinjiang? Time and again, we have seen people smearing and attacking China. We hope people can reject that and take a calm, objective attitude to distinguish the lies from the truth instead of being blinded by lies and rumors or even worse, becoming a tool to help them further spread the lies and rumors. Just to follow up on your last response to my question, if I understood you correctly, you said you're not aware of any task forces or other investigative efforts to examine allegations of systemic abuse in Xinjiang. Without such an effort, how can the Chinese government assure us that no such abuses are taking place? And a related question, the foreign ministry here in China recently pointed out that 150,000 indigenous people were placed in Canada's residential, excuse me, residential school school system since 2017, what is the exact number of people who have been placed in the indoctrination centers that China calls vocational training and skill centers in Xinjiang? First, I want to state that China, including the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region's government, have Clarify, offered clarification and uh, refutation on the claims of systemic abuses in Xinjiang's vocational education and training centers. As I just said, the, the people who fabricated these lies and rumors, uh, I talked about their true aim as an objective and unbiased and responsible media outlet after China has offered these clarifications and laying out the facts, um, the media outlet should at least, um, the least thing it can do is uh, do not trust a one-sided story and uh, it should not become a platform to spread rumors and lies about Xinjiang. This is um, a requirement for professional ethics in the media sector as to what you said about trainees at these centers. I can tell you that um, and they have all graduated a long time ago, and now they lead uh, normal lives as um, members of uh, the society.